Okay, this one. Hi, everyone. Everybody's. Yes, today's session will be recorded as well. So we'll be uploading this to our YouTube. So you'll be able to view it later as well. But yes, as you're entering in, please mute yourselves. We'll be starting with a great presentation from Prudential. We have Debbie here and Pierre, great people to learn more about uh, networking and LinkedIn and just the ins and out of really trying to show your digital presence. So it's gonna be a great conversation today. Um, as you're coming in, yes, please mute yourselves. Great, and do you, uh, Morgan, do you want us to get started or wait a little bit or? Um, well, give, it a, give it a few more minutes, Deb. Yeah, we can give it a few more minutes. I recently sent out um, an email, so. Oh, okay. I think Morgan, you said it best to those that are on this um, Zoom meeting. It's a conversation. So feel free to ask questions at any time. Uh, Debbie and I have have uh, presented to IABA now for many years. And I think it's always best that we give you the opportunity to ask questions, not only at the very end, but if you have relevant questions to what we're discussing, feel free to jump in and Morgan will, will uh, We'll address your questions as well as we can hear you. Yes, yes, I will. Yeah, just drop it in the chat or raise your hand if you have any questions. If anybody has any questions right now as we're waiting, um, I'm pretty sure Debbie and Pierre will be happy to answer those questions. Yeah, maybe we can just start. We can in, yeah. do introductions first while we're waiting for some people to join. Yeah, why don't yeah. we do that, Deb? Why don't you uh, so, work things off? Um, so hi everybody. So my name is Debbie Hubal. I've been with Prudential for 15 years. Um, I am part of talent acquisition and um, I have supported actuarial for several years during my time recruiting. So have always enjoyed working with the actuaries and have been to some of the great conferences and IABA events and um, presented to all of you. So very happy to be here. Thanks, Debbie. My name is Pierre Ledrapier. I've been at Pru, it's going on my 13th year. Um, I've supported actuary, the actuarial space for, I think it's going on eight years already. And I have been blessed to, to have attended uh, IABA annual conferences uh, for the past six or seven years, either in person or virtually. Uh, I think it's generally the best time of year for me. It's it's generally uh, it's a week long if it's in person, and I consider it a vacation. So happy that you all are joining us today as well. Yes, yes. Thank you both for, for being here with us today and holding this session. I know a lot of students. Um, we're asking you about this at the annual meeting as far as, you know, getting into digital presence and, you know, what's important and what's not important um, when trying to develop that and really showcase yourself to employers. So I know that you both are, you know, you participated earlier in our boot camp um, this year. And I know that, you know, today's going to be another great session. And you're going to give them all the gems and... <laughs> Things like I always say to these students, because I know a lot of the students here, um, you know, stuff that I wish I had in college when I was going through like all of the nitty gritty of trying to find a job and all of that. So, yeah, they're here today. If you have any questions, they're here. Um, and all of this is in preparation for our virtual career fair that is happening October 11th, um, Tuesday. And it's all day. I believe it's from like 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time to about 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, so it's it's an all-day event, and you are definitely invited to, you know, part participate and meet and talk with a bunch of potential employers. You know, we love that. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm letting a couple more people in. And then, yeah, if you all want to 
um, get started. I know somebody's jumping in on the call right now. Um, sure, that sounds good. And maybe what we can do to start things. So I would just be curious, is there um, anyone and, and people can put in the chat, does everyone have a LinkedIn profile? I guess that would be my first question. If you just want to put in the chat, yes, no, partial. Yes, Emmanuel does. Yes. Yes. It does. Okay, that's good so far. Three for three. Yep, another one. Well, that's good. That is good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if you don't have one, then um, take the information we're giving you today and then you can reach out to me directly. Um, Morgan will provide mm -hmm. you with my uh, contact information. Yes, I will. And um, so thanks everybody for um, replying. So just, I guess maybe what I'll do is, is start it out with just a, a little bit of information as far as like, why should you even have a LinkedIn profile? Or if you have a profile, why should you, you know, put some effort into it? And uh, so um, not sure how many of you know this, but LinkedIn is the, um, it's the largest business oriented networking web website. And it's geared, unlike other social media sites, specifically towards professionals. Um, it has over 500 million members in over 200 countries. So even if you're not actively searching for a job, it's just a really good way to get your name out there, to get your brand out there, to connect with recruiters, um, especially for those of you in early talent that are looking for positions. And even if you're not immediately looking for a position, it's always good to make those professional connections because you never know when you may, um, you know, when you may be looking for a role. So, and I would say in, in the role that Pierre and I do as recruiters, up to 87% of recruiters do regularly utilize LinkedIn to find active and passive job search candidates. And I will tell you in just my ne networking with other colleagues, that's true. Um, across the board. So that's one of the main go-to tools for recruiters when they're looking for, uh, proactively looking for talent for their roles. And um, another statistic from LinkedIn is that 35.5 million people have been hired by someone they connected with on LinkedIn. So definitely, um, you know, I, I would say it's definitely, in, you know, those are some of the reasons why it's important to have a LinkedIn profile. Um, I think the other thing to keep in mind is that, you know, as professionals in a working environment or a company, right, they spend a lot of time in building out your brand, but sometimes we forget how, that we should be building out our own personal brand. What are the skills that we have? And for a lot of us, it's not top of mind for us to go in and update our profile and update our personal brand, but something that, you know, we'll be talking about a little bit more that we would hope that um, everyone would keep in mind. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, I didn't know if someone had a question, sorry. So, um, and your LinkedIn profile page is basically that foundation for your personal branding. And LinkedIn is always adding features to increase the capabilities. Um, so, you know, once you create your LinkedIn profile, continue to log in, update the profile, stay active, which we'll talk a little bit about. But um, those were just, uh, you know, those were just some of the, the items that I wanted to mention as far as why, um, you know, why it is important to have a LinkedIn profile. And then, I don't know, Pierre, if you wanted to add anything before. No, I agree. I mean, obviously today, in today's day and age, recruiters, as, as you pointed out, Debbie, rely heavily on LinkedIn. I know when I have the time to source candidates, I really go into my my network, uh, initially go into my network to try to to, to reach out to, to candidates that I've spoken to before in the past. But I'm always building my network which I recommend everyone on this call to continue to do. Uh, your network should, should uh, you, you never have a cutoff on your network. I mean, make certain that you invite people or ask to join one's network that you really want to be a part of. But uh, networking is the key today. I mean, today we're in the, uh, you know, with COVID hitting us now, 
um, the days of us meeting in person, or hopefully they're, they're going to come back, are few and far between. And, um, and the other item that I'll mention too, outside of, yes, it can be a recruiting tool and it can help you in your professional development, but also just as far as your professional growth and um, getting current knowledge as far as what's going on in your industry and what are other, like in your case, actuaries talking about out there. So it's a way, I think, to educate yourself as far as what are people talking about in your specific function. Um, and, you know, we'll talk about this. There's groups. Um, I'm sure all of you are on some other type of social media. And the great thing about LinkedIn, when you see those feeds, is you get to see like, hey, what are other professionals talking about? What's top of mind? What are some of the things, like, what are some of the things that I should maybe doing, um, be doing some additional research on to make myself a more well-rounded professional? So... Right, more you any any the questions time. there um, before we dive into a little bit more about um, how to make sure that you have a strong profile? Okay. All right, we can move to the next slide. Oh, All right, so it's one more <laughs> There we are again. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wonderful host today. <laughs> and then, oh, and one thing that Pierre mentioned, please, you know, as we're talking through, this does not need to be formal at all. So please, you know, feel free to interrupt, type something in the chat. We're happy to answer questions as we're going through the information. Because I'm sure if you have the question, someone else does. And, and that's really where I think a lot of the learning happens. So. Exactly. Yeah, so please do not be afraid to ask questions. I know a lot of the people on the call were not afraid to ask questions, you know, when we were in person for the annual meeting. So this is nothing different, you know, still take advantage of the opportunities that, you know, we're, we're having here today. So I'll go ahead and click on. Okay. Great. Okay. So... Um, so here's here's a, a sample of a um, of a LinkedIn profile. So what you so a couple different things. So as far as the photo is concerned, you um, you want to make sure that your picture is recent, that it looks like you. Um, uh, another best practice is to make sure that your face takes up about sixty percent of the picture. Um, they say that like if you're doing something that's more of like a long distance shot, it's not going to stand out as well. Um, professional attire, wear what you would, you know, potentially wear at work, except I know when we're, you know, in our living rooms or <laughs> don't have any meetings. Um, and uh, yeah, and just make sure that it's a professional engaging photograph. Um, one of the other, we don't have it on this slide, but I know one of the other, um, items that they recommend. So now in LinkedIn, you can also have a background photo. So that's the second visual element that would be at the top of your profile page. So like if anyone's on Facebook, they have something similar. So that background photo is also an attention grabber and it kind of sets the context and shows a little bit more about what matters to you. So like one of our other colleagues um, at Prudential has a professional photograph and then they have a backdrop of like the Prudential um, Prudential in Newark and the skyline. So some, again, something like that, um, that is going to help your page stand out. Yeah. You make a great point, Debbie, your, your profile picture is really your calling card on LinkedIn. So keep in mind when someone takes a look at your profile, the two things they're going to see first is, is your picture and also the background piece. So that's really important. Uh, don't be afraid to, to take, Different, different shots of yourself and test them out. Um, but that's really the key. And a professional photo is, is essential. It's really a key. I mean, that's oftentimes I look at profiles and you really can't see the, the individual or maybe they're like, you know, it's just not, it's not professional. And that's really important, especially if uh, in the actuarial field, not only that, in any type of field. Obviously, you have friends that are going to be invited to your LinkedIn um, your LinkedIn uh, network, but uh, 
that that photo piece is really it's really the key. Yeah, and I think that's so important because even fresh out of graduation myself, I used my graduation picture and it was the only professional picture that I had. And it was like, you know, shoulders up and it had like a neutral background and it was very important in comparison to my first profile picture. It was a little rough. So it, it's that's very important because then I got the job at IABA. Um, obviously, but I think that really changing my profile picture definitely had something to do with it. Um, and some tips that I guess I would provide with, I don't mean to hijack. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know? no, please. please. Yeah. Yes, but no, um, some things that I've learned uh, from other professionals when I was in college is that if you can't afford, you know, to take a professional picture, it's nice to have like a white background and just take a picture, shoulder, you know, shoulders up, hair neat. Um, and then if you have a button up or something, you know, you can, can do that. That's kind of a way to cheat it. Uh, but it's, of course, you want the professional photo, of course, but I didn't have one until, you know, my graduation picture. So you have to find, you know, your way around it and still, you know, get it done because the professional picture is very important. So even if you can't afford, you know, a professional photographer or whatever, that's another thing you can do. Just take a picture with a blank neutral background, shoulders up, um, and just smile. And that that is good to, you know, head straight. So those are just some tips. Yeah, yeah. that's great. You know, they always say smile with your eyes. So make certain when you do smile, not only you're smiling with your, mm -hmm. you, you know, that's, that's important. So, uh, and, your, yeah. and your background photo is is really, is, is, is very important as well. Don't yeah. be enamored just with the photo. Make certain you have a, a nice photo, but the background piece is also a key component as well. Very, yeah. Any uh, questions on the photo piece before we jump into the headline? Okay, so the headline, so if you look at um, on Robert's profile, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion champion. So I think the important thing with the headline is, you know, he, so Robert is actually a vice president, diversity, equity, inclusion within our inclusive solutions organization. But notice he doesn't put vice president, diver, he has diversity, equity, and inclusion champion. And that's what I think you want to do. You want to make it a bit more engaging, you know, again, what is your story? So, you know, there, there's nothing that says that that one line has to be the, you know, the description of your job. Use it as an opportunity to share more about your role. So, for example, um, you know, I can put something on mine, maybe like talent acquisition, passion for placing the best talent in, you know, in, you know, career positions at Prudential or something like that. So instead of just putting my job title, I'm putting what connects me to the role, so. Yeah, great point. You wanna elaborate on that, just not just a job title as well. Again, that's that headline piece is the second piece for which someone who's viewing your profile is gonna take a look at. So those two, right off the bat, when I'm looking through profiles, that's really what I look at. Um, the photo make and, and it's and then the headline. I mean, obviously the photo is important, but the headline is really what's going to have me focus if this is a potential candidate, um, actuarial candidate for me or not. And um, yeah, um, a student did um, inbox me personally, so I won't uh, say the the name, I guess, because they wanted to be anonymous. But um, they said. What, sorry, I cannot see. Um, what would you recommend for a student? I think that's what it says. What would you recommend for a student? So I guess, what would a student put as their headliner if they're not, you know, potentially maybe active on campus or or anything mm -hmm. like that? You know, most of the uh, profiles I see on students are just, they, they capture their aspiring actuary. Give a little brief summary, possibly if, uh, if they have uh, had an internship or not. But uh, I like the fact when I see uh, a profile on a, a potential candidate that just recently graduated, just if they capture um, aspiring actuary or 
entry level candidate or actuary seeking first job, something like that. Something that's really going to capture my attention because I can look at hundreds of profiles, but if I'm looking for a specific candidate, that off the, right off the bat, if I know if they're a seasoned actuary or not, if it's going to be someone that I'm going to reach out to directly. Yeah, and you could put like similarly, you know, and maybe some of you as you're looking for internships or even early in your college career when you were creating initial resumes, even something that would that you might even put on a resume, like Pierre was saying, like ex aspiring actuary, excited for, you know, eager for my first career challenge or, you know what I mean? Something like that, that you, however you would want to tie that together, but you can be a little bit creative with it. Like you don't want to go overboard, but I think something like that works. Yeah, that was good. I, I mean, wish like, yeah. <laughs> No, that was and good. I yeah. will always say because I am I'm not a, a very creative person, but I always say when I see something that's good work, I can recognize it. So you know, look at look up some other actuaries on LinkedIn and see what some other people are doing. Sometimes that's the best way to get a feel for some of the things that resonate with you, even if you're not as creative to come up with it. But you might find like oh, I like what this person shared, but I also like what this person shared. And then maybe you can combine it a little bit to come up with your own unique, um, you know, headline or summary. Yeah. So. Yes, we have a question, David. Um, you want to, I see your hand is raised. You can um, unmute yourself and ask your question or, oh, oh never mind. He probably took his hand down. If you have any questions, David, just drop it in the chat or raise your hand like you did, and they'll be happy to answer. I know you just jumped on the call. So the next piece is a summary, and that's that's really, really important. The first thing to say about your LinkedIn summary is really to make certain you have one. I can't tell you how many profiles I look at, uh, especially for more of the junior actuaries, that they don't include a summary. It's really the opportunity for you to tell your story. So obviously if you don't have a lot of experience, your summary is going to be much, it's going to be brief compared to others that are seasoned actuaries, but leaving it blank, it just, it's not going to attract uh, someone to really take a close look at your profile. Um, just don't list your skills either. Um, it's important. Um, invest time in this. That's the best thing I can tell you. Just if you have a mentor, have them assist you with this, because once again, these three components, the photo, the headline, that's going to attract me to the profile. But then the summary is really um, the bread and butter of, of your actual LinkedIn profile. Yeah. And I think um, like Pierre was saying, you should really like this is one of those areas where, you know, people really do review summaries. So it's, you know, that's kind of your chance to tell your own story. So again, right, you don't want to just list skills. Um, but more so like, why do those skills matter and help to bring them to life? And how can they, you know, make a difference to, you know, the people that you're working with? Um, and then you also want to, there's like a listing of buzzwords that people often use like expert, innovative, creative, strategic, that sometimes I think people overuse a little bit. So those words are fine to use, but you want to also um, make sure that as you're using those words that you're kind of tying it together and able to demonstrate in either how you describe yourself or, you know, the, the work that you're doing, you know, to, to help make that summary more holistic, if that makes sense. So any questions? Yeah, yeah I would agree on that. I'll just piggyback on that a little bit. Just, uh, just make certain that your summary really reflects on who you are and what you are. That's really important. Um, again, this is something that I'm going to focus on when I'm looking up, and I'm sure Debbie, you can, you can uh, also share the same sentiment that this is something that you really look at when you're looking at profiles. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 LinkedIn has been came very important on top of, you know, like a resume, having a cover letter, having like all of those. LinkedIn yeah. is another thing on the checklist that you have to 
make sure you have and set up nicely. <laughs> yeah. One thing to make certain to keep in mind though, when you have a summary, make certain that when you are speaking to a recruiter or potential employer, you kind of recall what you put down on that summary. So don't, just don't use buzzwords like Debbie said or capture words that really don't summarize your career or, or your potential. Um, because I usually will ask someone, I'll, I'll just, especially for entry level candidates, I'll, I'll bring up their summary to them directly. And I may ask them, well, I see that you, you put down your creative, how, can you describe how, how you're creative? And then if there's a pause, you know, I'm always, I'm, I'm very easy going, but it's just, you don't know with the right recruiter or right firm, you may not, uh, might have someone as, as easy going as I am, but, uh, Anything you have on your LinkedIn page and your resume, you make certain you're, you're able to speak to it as well. So I, I think the next step and is really to grow your network in LinkedIn, because this is your opportunity to reach out to many different individuals. And I can't tell you how important it is to build your LinkedIn profile. Um, spend time, you know, looking at if you meet someone at a, at a, uh, at a career fair or, you know, at a conference, make certain to get names. The, the days of people handing out business cards, which was really prominent back in my day, uh, yeah. they're no longer there. Uh, people just say, just send me a LinkedIn invite. And if someone asks you to send them an invite and you think this is someone that's going to be valuable to your network, either today or in the years to come, take advantage of it. Because your network, you'd be surprised how many people that I've spoken to over the years. And LinkedIn has been really part of my recruiting efforts for over 10 years now, and it continues to build that reach out to me because I was part of their network or I reach out to them. And um, I would just, uh, yeah, I would just echo what Pierre is saying. And then any time that you're in a meeting or you meet someone or you're at a networking event or a training event, like just trying to make it a habit afterwards to just follow them, um, you know, to follow up with the LinkedIn invite. I think there's also a functionality where you can sync like your, I don't, I don't know exactly how this works, but I'm sure you can find it, um, where you can sync like your email, um, like your, your personal address book, and, that, and then it will automatically give you recommendations as far as who you can connect with. Um, so, and, and then before you know it, once you start to grow your network, then people are going to be adding you and sending you invites. And then, um, you know, because the more robust your network is, uh, the better. So, okay, we could probably move to the next. Um, so this, um, so just to, to hop back, just to finish up the making the profile piece. So you have your, you know, you have your one liner, your title, you have your summary, and then you're going to um, list some of your experiences. Um, I think the big thing with the experiences, again, you don't want to paste your whole resume on here. So it should just be, you know, like in, in this scenario, the person had two different roles, um, so they put like a little, a little blurb that kind of covered both roles, but they're not putting full job responsibility. So it's just to give someone a quick overview of the most impactful work that you're doing, um, when you're, when you're listing your experiences. I don't know if there's anything else you want to add about that here or... No, I think you should summarize it best. I think the next topic is is, is essential too. Is let's let's uh, first check to see if there's any questions from anyone. I think we've dived deep into a couple topics now. But uh, as we've all, Morgan, Debbie, and I have said, if you have any questions, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Raise your hand or unmute yourself. And I ask questions in all my meetings all the time. Ask here. <laughs> yeah. I'm the question lady. <laughs> Mrs. Q, because she's always has always has questions. <laughs> yes, even if you already have a LinkedIn or anything like, ask questions. Like Debbie mentioned earlier, it might be a question that another student might have, which you know everybody might have the same question, and it just takes that one person to ask it. 
Um, I know one person asked me a question, so I'm hoping that you know we keep asking questions. Um, this might just be basic knowledge to you all as well. Like you all, like a lot of the callers, or not callers, <laughs> a lot of the uh, people on the call mentioned that they do have a LinkedIn account. Well, uh, do you have it to this extent? Like, do you have the experience, you know, written out? Do you have your skills written out? Um, because it's it's similar to resume writing, but it's very different as well. So you definitely want to, you know, make sure you're highlighting certain things on your LinkedIn that you wouldn't normally do on your resume. So even if you think you have, you know, all the answers or you're afraid to ask, you know, questions, just ask. Um, like I, I always say. Yeah, it doesn't have to be related to LinkedIn either. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask. Yeah. Well, we've yeah. we've uh, over, we've um, led uh, resume writing and interview skills and so forth. So we'll have some time, I think, if you have additional questions. But next topic is the skills piece, and this is really important as well. Um, you have the opportunity on LinkedIn to choose your skills. Now, a lot of people think that the more skills they list is is is, is really essential. That's not true. List your relevant skills, skills that you feel really comfortable with. So, for example, as an actuary, if you've taken Python, I would list that first and foremost. Any any relevant skills to uh, to the job you're actually looking to uh, to land would be really beneficial to you. But don't it doesn't have to be a laundry list of every skill that you have. And it's really important to to make sure you update that as well. So, if you're taking a class. And you've learned something new, uh, you know, update your skills. Everyone should update their skills periodically on LinkedIn. It's really important. Yes, yeah. I, need <laughs> I need to as well. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, I don't have a lot of skills, though. So. <laughs> we could all probably <laughs> yeah. go on and, and update our LinkedIn. Yes. <laughs> And, and the skills really help you to substantiate what you have in your headline, what you have in your summary. It gives others an opportunity to endorse you in different areas. And, and like Pierre said, if you, if you just start putting a long list that isn't relevant, then it just becomes not, it just looks like you're selecting everything. So I, yeah, I, I would really be careful about, um, thoughtful, I would say, about the skills that you're listing. So, all right. Yeah, um, Emmanuel, I didn't, I saw you raised your hand. I didn't know if you still have a question, but if you do still have a question, um, just raise it again or just drop it in the chat. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, um, Yeah. thank you very much for all the information that um, you've given us. I, I wanted to um, find out, I realized um, when applying for a role, like an internship role or something, um, most companies have the option for you to apply with your LinkedIn profile. Um, is it advisable to do that? Or um, we should always apply with our resume? Because you just mentioned um, the experience and everything we have over there shouldn't be exactly the same as what you have on our resume. So in the case where probably you'd like to apply with your LinkedIn profile, how do you go about it? That, that's a great question, Emmanuel. I'm glad you brought that up. So you have the opportunity to... Uh, to apply through your LinkedIn profile. I highly recommend you, if you apply to a role, to attach a resume and a cover letter. Yeah. Uh, obviously, anyone that looks at your resume is most likely gonna check your LinkedIn profile and take a look at it as well. But I know that majority of my hiring managers prefer a resume and they like to see a, a cover letter. Now, naturally, uh, before they receive your resume, generally a recruiter will speak to you and they'll give the um, potential hiring manager a brief summary. Um, after they sp have spoken to you. But hiring managers, and Debbie, you can correct me if I'm wrong because you do a lot of HR-related uh, openings as well. They want to see a resume. They really do. So uh, I would, um, I'd recommend attaching a resume as well. You, you may have the option to do both um, on certain job sites, but... Um, yeah, and I think it's a... Yeah, and it depends because when you apply via LinkedIn then each company is different as far as I'll just call it like the, the talent acquisition system that they use. So like if you apply, if you see a prudential job on LinkedIn, when you click on that to apply, it's then going to take you to the prudential application portal. So you have an opportunity, yes, to attach your LinkedIn, but then it's all, it's going to add like prudential is going to ask you, you know, have you attach a resume cover letter if you would like, and, and different companies might be different, but 
I would, in addition to the, like if it gives you the option to put your LinkedIn or it auto connects to your LinkedIn profile, I would still add the resume as well. Cover letter, it depends. Some groups may, I feel like that's split. If you have one, it's probably best if you have it, I, I would submit it, but. Yeah, yeah. I, like the, I like the fact of having a cover letter it doesn't have to be anything that's, you know, long in length. It could simply be a, a paragraph or two, but uh, cover letters for me as a recruiter, I always enjoy reading the cover letters, the cover mm -hmm. letters. And I generally will share cover letters with hiring managers if I think they're, it, it's going to be an asset to the candidate. If I don't feel it's going to be an asset, sometimes cover letters are only a sentence or two. And I can summarize that with potential hiring managers and I will include it, but. I, I like the fact of having a cover letter attached, but. Yeah, and um, I applied to IABA through LinkedIn. So um, she just, they, um, a lot of jobs are, you know, putting the job descriptions up there and they're looking, you know, they're looking for jobs and everything or looking for people for their jobs, um, for their positions that they have open. So I was a person that applied through LinkedIn and I attached my resume and I think I attached a cover letter because they asked for it. Um, but other jobs either sent me, like Debbie was mentioning, like the third port portal that they have. Um, they might just shift you to like a link and you might have to enter like all your information there. So I say to do both um, if you can. Like I applied to LinkedIn, but then I also um, looked up Kate, which was the executive director, and I sent her my resume as well. So you can do whatever I just think it's beneficial that you have that direct connection to somebody in comparison to how, like how it used to be. So oh, and Morgan, you just brought up a really good point. So uh, on a lot of like, if you're applying to roles, a lot of times, again, it depends on the company and the package they have, but you'll be able to see the recruiter's name on the job potentially. So if you do that, like I've had people that have applied to a job and they saw that my name was listed as the recruiter and then they'll send me a message to say, hey, really, you know, just like a nice in mail, just apply to this role. Here's a little bit about myself. Would love to connect if you're available. So that's always a nice touch to get your, you know, and, and you know, different roles get different applicants. But if you have a job where, you know, 100 people are applying, um, any anything additional that you can do to set yourself apart to have someone take a little bit of a closer look will always be helpful. And I think that's probably too, like for the internships as well, where you get a lot of, you know, a, a lot of competition for those internships. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for your question, Emmanuel. Um, I think somebody dropped. Oh, you have another question. Go ahead. Yeah. So, um, Debbie, you just mentioned the email and um, the email, um, feature of the LinkedIn. Um, I wanted to ask um, when you are connecting with um, um, like top professionals on LinkedIn, um, is it always advisable to um, use that feature of LinkedIn to probably send an introductory message for them to know who you are and then like if they would like to connect and then they connect? Because I realized mm -hmm. most of those people, when you send them a, a connection request, they either don't reply or it takes very long for them to get back to you. So. I don't know if there's any strategy on how you are supposed to approach um, connecting with them. Yeah. I see. So I think, so to your first question, I think what you were saying is, you know, when you send that initial invite to connect with someone, is that your opportunity to also put a little bit of a, you know, sometimes people, instead of just sending me an invite to connect, they'll put a little bit of, you know, an introduction, you know, as to why they're connecting with me. So I think that's great. Um, you know, for sure you would want to do that. I think your other question was sometimes when you're sending people invites, it may be taking a little bit longer for people to accept them. Um, and, and that could just be, you know, it could just be, I don't know what the specific circumstances, but I'll, I'll give an example, like maybe if it's a recruiter and, they're in the midst of their heavy recruiting season. So they might be getting a lot of LinkedIn messages from individuals. So they might take a day where they say, okay, I'm going to go through all of my LinkedIn messages on this day. Like it could, it could just be like, if someone has a, 
a large volume or, you know, I'm not, I'm not really sure what those circumstances are, but I know, you know, so even me, I, I like, I'll, you know, I'll admit like sometimes, you know, I'm interviewing and so forth. And I might say, oh, Friday might be my day where I'm going to go into LinkedIn and then accept my invites and reply back to people. So, so it might just, you know, take people a little bit longer if they're getting a high volume of reach outs on LinkedIn. Yeah, don't, don't be discouraged, Emmanuel, because as Debbie made a good point, oftentimes not everyone checks their LinkedIn profile every day. Now, if you're on the job market, you're going to use LinkedIn several times a day. But oftentimes, like for myself, my volumes are real high right now. I don't have the opportunity to go into LinkedIn um, more than once a week, sometimes not even that often. So don't be discouraged with that. When you do send, send a LinkedIn invite, I would definitely, when I have invites and there's, there's a sentence or two, or why someone wants to join my network, even if it's all being brief, it's going to attract me to really accept the invite from an individual. Typically, any actuary that sends me an invite, I'm going to accept. But oftentimes, I get invites from non-actuaries or agencies that are looking to do work with Prudential or just people completely out of the blue. Well, I'm kind of selective on who I put in my LinkedIn network. I like it's a, I have a rather large network. And I think initially when I started my network many years ago, I was taking as many as possible because I just wanted to see my network grow. Now I'm a lot more selective to who I, who I accept. So, and make certain you do the same thing too. Just don't accept anyone. I mean, if it's a college friend or someone you've met, yeah, put them in your network as well. But um, if you have someone that's reaching out to you that um, really just don't see the, the reason why, you, you know, you need to be connected with them, don't, you know, be selective. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I I'm guilty of that as well. <laughs> I have to go and look at my LinkedIn account because so many, you know, students and everything are trying to connect. So we're, we're getting through it. And I think, you know, like definitely don't. Um, Caleb asked a question, but uh, Caleb, can you clarify after an interview um, or what, what was your question exactly? Yeah, Caleb, you can go off oh, mute yeah. if you want. Feel free to just talk to us. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. I think I was typing, but I, I didn't finish typing. And <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I just wanted to ask um, if you're scheduled for an interview or maybe after an interview, is it okay to um, like reach out to the interviewers on LinkedIn to maybe thank them and ask them for the next steps? Or, I mean, it is appropriate to do that via email. So you're asking about follow-up? I'll give my thoughts and then Pierre, you, you may differ. I don't, I wouldn't use LinkedIn as your tool to thank interviewers unless you don't have their email. I think an email after the interview and you can ask your recruiter to provide that or you might have it, like if you know the naming conventions, if you have an email, I would send an email and then I would send an invite to connect after the interviews. But if you don't have the email, then I think it's fine to send, you know, a LinkedIn invite saying, you know, and I would just say, didn't have your email, but just wanted to really, you know, let you know, I appreciated the time, you know, that we spent in discussing the role. And then I wouldn't ask for next steps. I would just say, you know, look forward to connecting in the future but don't use it to like follow up and ask what your next steps are or anything like that, because that should come directly from the company or the recruiter. Yeah. Great point. And um, I like the fact that nowadays, not too many hiring managers will provide you with, like I said, a business card or their email address. If you're going through a firm, through a recruiter, I would um, initiate the contact with them directly. Um, and then oftentimes someone will say, well, I'd like to send a thank you note directly to the, the four individuals that interviewed me uh, if because I can't really share email addresses I'll ask them to send it to me through my email and I'll forward it directly to the hiring manager and, and Debbie you made a great point you never asked follow up on a LinkedIn message with what are the next steps um, just thank them they're going to know that you're interested in the role when you when they receive an, a, a LinkedIn message from you following up very professional to do that as well be short brief but um, thanking them is, is a real nice gesture on, on one's behalf as well. Yes. Um, we also have another question that was sent to me. Um, they said, 
I am an inspiring actuary um, or I am aspiring to be an actuary. However, I am open to other positions in data science and data, data analytics internship positions. Is it advisable to put all these interests in my headlines? Well, if this individual, and I don't know who asked that question, but if, if they have an actuarial exam, I would focus on becoming an actuary. Oftentimes, someone's a career changer, they just want to get their foot in the door and they have not sat for an exam or passed an exam. Well, they have to go a different route. And uh, data analytics is, is really prevalent in today's market. So nothing wrong with that as well. Um, just be careful of, you know, if I'm looking for an individual that's an aspiring actuary, I'm going to focus on their exam progression, their, um, their skill set that they've learned in college. Obviously, technical skills are really relevant to an actuary in today's market. But um, I can't tell you how many career changes I've come across, and especially in the last couple of years, someone that's been in uh, a claims examiner even or an underwriter, and they've, um, they've taken the path to become an actuary. I love that. Someone that has the business experience, a couple of years of experience, and has taken the initiative now to become an actuary. I had someone actually recently at Prudential that was an um, underwriter for a couple of years, set for their first exam, failed it took it again, passed it, and applied internally to a role. And we were so happy to offer a position. So, yeah, don't be, um, if you feel that you're driven by, you know, just getting your foot in the door, so to speak, then go for it. Absolutely. But don't have like 10 different jobs on, you know, yeah. and it wouldn't be good. Yeah, but I think it's okay. Like if you're looking at more than one option, I think not this specifically, but um, like if you're on your headline, I think you can put, um you know, something like aspiring actuary slash data scientist excited to use my analytical skills in my next challenge or something like that. So you're kind of leaving the door open to both, you know, to both career options. I like that, Debbie. You should have said that a little slower. I bet you she would have written that down. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't ask me to repeat it because... <laughs> It's recorded, so you can oh, there you go. Oh, okay. So you can just hopefully <laughs> that's right. They can play it at a slower pace there, but right, <laughs> they're right. Are they're fast talkers. Um, hmm. I'm curious. This individual asked that question. They have are they sitting for an exam or they have they passed an exam yet? They have an undergraduate degree in act in actuarial science. Um, Ishmael, did you want to? Um, because I believe Ishmael is also a part of um our exam prep program. So I think that he's um, also preparing to set or to sit for exam FM um, within the next couple of weeks. So it may be that they're trying to get um, a couple exams under their belt um, currently. And that's as much as I know about the, about the student. Um, you can go ahead, Ishmael. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I have a, uh, an undergraduate degree in actuarial science and I'm preparing to sit for an exam. Oh, that's the great. FM specifically. Yeah, all I can tell you is network with you know your colleagues as well, because FM, from what I gather, and I speak to a lot of aspiring actuaries, probably the most difficult exam to take as an actuary first the first time. I heard probability P exam is if you're strong in math, it's um, it's not as is it's not as difficult to pass. But um, that's why when you know, we talk to aspiring actuaries, we always tell them to talk to people who have recently taken the exam mm -hmm. and they give you a little insight what to do. So again, it's all about your network. And if you don't ask, you know, you're going to, you know, doing yourself an injustice. Yes. And I think that's a great important piece and something that we do with the exam prep program at IABA. We connect them with people that are still sitting, you know, for exams or they just finished, you know, their, their whole little exam journey and they're they're trying to help other people as well so yeah i think that's an important piece to really talk to people that are more fresh you know in it and everything so yeah appreciate that pierre and thank you ishmael for you know answering the question or asking the question and everything I know you all had a couple of more slides. <laughs> Did you all want to? Okay, and I just put in the chat, but for those of you, please, um, I, I have a, a commitment that I need to drop for. So uh, Pierre will finish out, but um, please, 
connect with me on LinkedIn. Any additional questions? Um, I hope you guys found this useful. And again, happy to you know answer any follow up questions. Yes. Thanks, Debbie. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Debbie, so much. Bye. Bye. These, these sessions we're always um, a lot one hour, but. I know that in the past, Debbie and I have been slotted for one hour and we go close to two. Today, that won't happen, but um, <laughs> we kind of pride ourselves in the Q&A segment of um, these virtual meetings as well. So I, I can wrap things up. I mean, the endorsement piece is important, obviously, um, where they say sp spread the, um, endorsements. It's really spread the love. So to speak. To, you know, endorse people. You know, yeah. That's important. Um, also, um, manage your endorsements as well. You may get quite a few of them. You can ask for an endorsement as well. But when I'm looking at a profile and, and I see hundreds of endorsements, well, I don't, I don't have time to read all them. So um, there's a way you can manage your endorsement and endorsements. Please do so. That's important as well because a really crisp LinkedIn profile uh, attracts the, the potential recruiters or hiring managers. Oftentimes, hiring managers network themselves. So. That's why your, your complete profile, it's, it's important not to, to leave uh, a stone uncovered, so to speak. Yes, make it easy for the recruiters <laughs> to be able to look at all your information and get a sense of who you are and everything. That I think that's the, the biggest thing that my mentor told me. You know, you don't want to give them a headache or a make it a hassle for them to look at everything that you have. It, you want to be able to really like make it easy for the recruiter and they love that. So then they'll, you know, love you as more as a candidate. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I would agree. And I think you, you, you really, that's something that you, the word you just mentored is a mentor. If you don't have one and you should have more than one, but if you don't have one, seek a mentor, especially someone that's, if you're an aspiring actuary, someone that's you know, been in the actuarial space for a few years that can, that can assist you as well. So you should have different levels of mentors. You have your, your really seasoned actuaries, and then you have more or less someone that's an intermediate level actuary who's really gone through the vigors of being an actuary, becoming an actuary. <clears throat> They're the best people to really con to, to connect with because they kind of know the journey that you're undertaking. It's it's a difficult journey. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's difficult, but it's yeah. uh, a, uh, a journey that's very fulfilling when you, when you land your first job as an actuary. And the actuarial market right now is booming. I can't tell you how many, how competitive it is. If you're an actuary looking for a job, um, you really have your choice of where you want to land as well. Yes. And we have one more question from Emmanuel. Um, you want to, you can go ahead, Emmanuel, and um, unmute yourself and ask your question. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You didn't um, say anything about the LinkedIn assessments. I, I don't know if, if that is something that we should look at as well because I realize LinkedIn has an, an option for you to assess yourself for the skills I have. So um, do recruiters look at those um, skills, those assessments as well? Now, I tell you the truth, I do not. I don't think Debbie does as well. I mean, there's extent to that, uh, the assessment piece. Um, generally, what we do at Prudential is, especially for entry-level candidates, we have a, a, a it's, it's a tough interview, but generally it's an interview that's going to... Um, it's going to uh, include like they're going to focus on your skill sets as well. Yeah, yeah, I I did the assessments as well when I was um you know applying for jobs. So I participated in the whole LinkedIn Premium package and how they have like all these different things as well. I think it for you know the you all's profession probably not. Um, but when I was working with like soft skills and everything, they wanted to know that I had emotional intelligence. And you know things like that. So, I guess the profession sounds like from Pierre. It might not be the top of the things that you know, top of the list of things that they look at um, regarding your profile. So maybe a good thing, but not. Yeah, we don't use it at Prudential, but other firms may. So I don't want to, you know, you know, speak. I'm speaking just for as a Prudential person, a uh, recruiter, I should say. So. Um, I wouldn't advise it, but that's not, uh, don't, don't. Yeah. <laughs> it's all, you know, up to you, but um, they, I know LinkedIn premium has like a lot of different features. So I would definitely, I know like they have um, trainings and 
and all these other things where you can get uh, certificates and all of that. But of course, that was something for me when I was doing like DEI and everything. So that that's a little bit different. So yeah, thank you for ans asking that question, Emmanuel. Um, were there any more questions for Pierre? Yes, I would like to ask a question. Yeah. Um, typically, for an actual intern internship position, uh, what are some of the questions in the interview process? Hmm. If, 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 as a recruiter, you're asking me what type of questions I would ask an individual? Yes. Okay, that's that's a really good question. All the questions today are, are, are really good, so I commend all of you. So typically when I, I speak to, especially if I meet with someone in person, it's a lot easier to do it than than over the phone. Most of my phone, my interviews are either over uh, Zoom or Teams, or if not, it's on the phone. Questions I ask, uh, and we consider this more or less a type of interview. So it's more a mock interview for me because obviously my goal, if you answer a question, and I think I can guide you to answer it a little bit better when you do speak to a hiring manager, I'm gonna give you that more or less, you know, the, my advice on to how to uh, address the question, but I, I dive deep into um, your, um, not only what you've done, you've accomplished, you got to keep thinking things in mind. One, a few things in mind is one is that the competition for entry level actuaries is at an all time high. We do see a number of actuaries applying and obviously exam progression is important. We like to see candidates with a couple of exams. Having an internship is real important as well. Um, having a high GPA is important. So I'll go over that, those type of questions with you. But I want to learn a little bit more about you than just, you know, the, the surface of what you've done. It's, you can, I can find actuaries with two exams and an internship and a high GPA or even advanced degree. Um, typically, it happens quite often. What I don't find is, is having someone that has um, a really strong um, the, the the, the personal as aspect of the interview. So I want to know more about you, challenges you had. I want to not only hear the good things, but I want to hear how you've overcome different, different obstacles in, in, your, in your brief career. And sometimes it just has to do with, with, your, um, with your years as an undergraduate student as well. Like I'll ask a question, um, explain to me a time when you were in a group and you, someone wasn't pulling their weight, how you dealt with it. Because when we hire an actuary, even though they're in the entry level, we envision them to one be one to one day be one of our leaders. And I, if I speak to someone and they just show me how they handle the situation in such a unique way, well, when I talk to a hiring manager and present resumes, I'm going to share that with them as well. So, um, yeah, just be prepared. Don't don't just don't be prepared to answer just the typical X and O questions. Um, talk about yourself. One thing that's real important though, when you're interviewing, keep this in mind. Not only is the company interviewing you, you're interviewing the company. If you have that mindset, I assure you that you're going to do extremely well with your interviews. Many, many, many years ago when I was coming out of college, someone taught me that because I interviewed a few times and I was just nervous. But then they finally just said, you know, you're good at what you do. Um, ask questions. Come prepared. Okay, and this is not really part of the LinkedIn piece, but it's something that I think that if, if everything that you're learning today, if you just keep this in mind, be prepared, come with questions, um, and make certain that uh, you, uh, you kind of like sell yourself as well. Okay, that's important. Don't oversell yourself, but be humble, but be... Um, just make certain that you just feel real confident in your ability. So it's the best way to sum it up. So hopefully that answers answered your question. Yeah. I hope it did too, because that was some good advice. <laughs> that was that was really good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, sure. Everybody that's on this call, I don't know if you participated in the mock interviews at IABA offers as well. But if anyone wants to, one great thing about credentials we employ and hired a number of IABA actuaries over the years, they're always willing to help out. So if anyone's interested in speaking to one of the actuaries here at Pro, I'll connect you with them as well. If you also wanna have a mock interview, mock interviews are great because it's your opportunity to, uh, to have an interview, it's a mock interview. So if you, you kind of make mistakes, 
are, you know, we kind of critique you and then you only better yourself for the, the real live interviews that you're going to have in, in the uh, months to come. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely follow a lot of Pierre and Debbie's tips today. Follow up with them. Debbie said, you know, she's looking forward to you all, uh, you know, sending her a LinkedIn invite. Definitely do that and follow up with them. Send them a message, you know, attached to the invite and everything so they know who you are. Um, yeah, I think Manuel just asked a question about internships. Debbie and I oversee all full-time hires. We don't get involved in the internship piece, but if you'd like, just send me a LinkedIn invite and then uh, you can forward me a copy of your resume and I'll be more than happy to share it with our campus team. There we go. See, <laughs> we're talking about LinkedIn and like jobs and internships and opportunities happen through LinkedIn. So definitely connect with Pierre. It's a very important piece um, to you all's journey. Um, trying to look for jobs and internships. I know firsthand it was very important um, looking for jobs and everything. So yes, if you all have any more questions. Um, oh, Caleb said, awesome, thank you. Um, yes, <laughs> if you all have any questions, definitely reach out uh, to Pierre or myself. Um, I do have his contact um, email, but it might be better for you all to also link, um, you know, connect with him through LinkedIn or both. You know, just either one is fine, but definitely reach out and use these resources, okay? I'm going to tell you, Morgan, if people don't reach out to me via LinkedIn, I'll be a little disappointed because that's the topic of today. I want to see how aggressive no. they are. So send me a LinkedIn invite. Debbie and I both LinkedIn invites. I promise you that um, we will respond real promptly. Yes, yes. <laughs> As we were talking about our LinkedIn's being. <laughs> yeah, our LinkedIn speed. Sometimes my LinkedIn speed is slowed down quite a bit. And when my volume is high, it's not as good. But um, yeah. uh, when I have meetings like this, I always pride myself in making certain I check within 24 hours. And I check Thanks. daily as well. Yeah. So also, if you want to connect with me, do so as well. I'm on LinkedIn, Morgan Coleman, <laughs> if you haven't already. So, yeah. Did you have anything else, Pierre? I think, uh, well, the re recording... The event. Yeah, so I'm going to upload the recording today after this call. I'm going to upload it um, and probably send out like a mass email either tonight or tomorrow. So it will be up on the page today, um, but messaging will go out tomorrow um, officially. Great. Yes, yes. thank you so much. With, I think we're done with the slides too, right? I hope we yes, are. Yes, yeah. Okay. Question, answers. Okay. Thank right. you. <laughs> Okay, we'll be glad to. Okay, yes, yes, please. Um, I will definitely follow up with you all with this recording. Reach out to Pierre, Debbie, take advantage, advantage, advantage. Um, tomorrow, as Pierre was mentioning, we do have our mentoring program info session going on tomorrow. So definitely check that out on our um, AIBA website at blackactuaries.org or our social media. IBA Black Actuaries on all platforms, including LinkedIn, um, which is our most popular one. So definitely um, check that out if you're looking for any such connections. We can get that some for you as well. And yes, remember that our career fair is October 11th. It is virtual and it's 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's all day. And we'll have about over, I think, 40 um, companies there. So definitely attend, participate. Um, you can find all this information on blackactuaries.org. Yeah, thanks more. I want to connect with you on that as well. Learn a little bit more about next week because uh, a couple of yeah. uh, my, my colleagues have asked about how they can assist as well, especially our IND team. So. Oh yeah, definitely. Please. We'll, we'll talk. We'll definitely yeah, talk. I'll connect. We'll connect <laughs> more. But I thank everyone. And Morgan, thank you so much because you're always the best proctor when it comes to these these virtual sessions as well. Without without you, I don't think we could get it done. So I thank you so much. I thank, thank everyone you. that was on my phone. <laughs> please do not be shy in reaching out to me if you have any questions. Yes, yes, please. He is fantastic. Please reach out to him. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you All again, right. everybody. Morgan, I'll connect with you tomorrow. Yep. Sounds good. All right, guys. Bless have you, a... everybody. Take care now. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you all. <laughs> Bye.